हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई क्लास यू नो दैट आई एम हेलो मनीषा टीचर एंड जूनियर लेक्चर ऑफ एलिबथ हाई स्कूल एंड जूनियर कॉलेज हिया सो इन टूडेज क्लास वर्ड डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द थर्ड चैप्टर विच इज़ रिलेटेड टू द सोशल स्टडीज नाइन्थ क्लास एंड चैप्टर नेम इज हाइड्रोसफिया सो हेयर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द हाइड्रोसफिया इन दिस क्लास फर्स्ट वी विल अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज हाइड्रोलॉजिकल साइकिल हेयर वाटर इज ए साइकिलिकल रीन्यूएबल रिसोर्स हिया so it can be used and reused so here the water goes through a cycle from oceans to land and then from land to oceans here here the water cycle has been going on for billion of years exactly and all the life on the earth depend on it we know this very well without water nobody can survive on this earth so here the hydrological cycle is a circulation of water in different forms that is liquid solid and gaseous phases here so it also refers to the continuous exchange of water between the oceans atmosphere land surface subsurface and all the living organisms here so here the hydrological cycle is sometimes expressed as rf ro and et whereas here the rf is rainfall that includes all type of precipitation and ro is referred to the runoff and et is referred to the evapotranspiration here so here there are the six stages in the water cycle and they are evaporation transportation condensation precipitation runoff and ground water here now we will discuss in detail about all these stages first we will go with the evaporation what is evaporation here in this evaporation water is transferred from the surface of the earth to the atmosphere through evaporation here the process by which water changes from liquid to gases here and here the sun's warmth heat up and evaporate the water from the earth surface like land lakes rivers and oceans send up to a steady stream of water vapors through this process only here plants are also lose water to they through transpiration so this is the process and term evaporation now we will see what is transportation here in this process the movement of water through the atmosphere specifically from over the ocean to the overland and in the form of clouds is transportation so here the clouds are propelled from one place to another by either the upper air circulation or the surface based circulation like land and the sea breeze and other mechanisms also so this is all about the transportation now we will see about the condensation here here in this process of condensation the transported water vapor is eventually condensed and forming the tiny droplets and clots here after condensation come to the precipitation here in this process of precipitation the primary mechanism of the transporting water from the atmosphere to the surface of the earth in the form of precipitation only here when the clouds meet cool air over the land and the precipitation in the form of rain shelt or snow is triggered and water returns to the land or in a seas here so this is the process of the precipitation of water here now we will see about the runoff what is a runoff here the most of the water which returns to the earth to flow down the hills as a runoff so here the sum of its penetrates into the land and charges the ground water while the rest of the river flows and returns to the oceans where it evaporates get it here so after the runoff now we will see about the ground water here here under the special circumstances here the ground water can even flow the upward in the eastern wells so here the flow of ground water is much slower than the runoff here the hydrological cycle is not a simple process of the circulation of water between the ocean and the atmosphere and the land so here there are a number of sub cycles operating within it exactly so 
see this picture of the hydrological cycle how all these stages are taken place you can understand better by seeing this picture after observing the picture of the hydrological cycle now we will discuss about the water sources here the 97.2169 percent of water is saline ocean water and only the 2.78 31% is the fresh water. Here the greatest portion of the fresh water is 69.56% is in, in the form of ice and permanent snow cover in the Antarctica and the Arctic and in the mountain regions here. Whereas the 30.1% access as a fresh ground waters only the 0.34 percent of the amount of fresh water on the earth is concentrated in lakes and the river system where it is most easily accessible for our needs and absolutely vital for the water ecosystem get it here so this is the source of water now we will see about the oceans here Continents and oceans are the first relief features of the earth. We know this very well, exactly. So here the large water bodies are called oceans. Here the geographers has divided the oceanic part of the earth into the five oceans, namely as the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean and the Southern Ocean that is Antarctic Ocean and at last the Arctic Ocean is there. So here the word sea is often the interchangeable with the ocean only but a sea is a body of saline water partly or fully enclosed by the land. So here the major oceaning divisions are defined in a part of the continents. So here the various and other criteria also. So all this is about the oceans. Now we will see about the relief of the ocean here. Here the ocean basin are in many ways similar to the land surface. They are the submarine ridges and the plateaus and the canyons and the terraces formed within the ocean here. Here the ocean flow is divided into four parts and that is continental shelf, continental slope and deep sea plain or abyssal plain and oceanic deeps or the trenches here. So see this picture of the ocean floor here. Now come to the salinity of the ocean here. Have you ever eaten the food without salt? Was it tasty? Did early human beings use salt in the food or not? Where is salt available other than the oceans? So here is salt used just for a taste for any other reasons also is water salty in your village tank so if not why is ocean water is salty all these questions we will solve in this salinity of the ocean we will come to know why the ocean has the salty water so here have you ever wondered why the oceans are filled with the salt water instead of the fresh water? What is the main reason for this? We will see. So here, where did the salt come from? And is it the same salt you find on your dining room table or not? Here, most of the salt in the ocean come from the land only. Here, over millions of years, rain, rivers and streams have washed over the rock and containing the compound called sodium chloride that is NaCl and carried into the sea. So here carried into the sea. You may know that the sodium chloride by its common name is table salt only. Some of the salt in the oceans come from under the sea volcanoes and the hydrothermal vents where the when water evaporates from the surface of the ocean the salt is left behind so here the over millions of years the oceans have developed noticeable salty water so this is the reason why the oceans have salty water get it so here the salinity is the term used to define the total content of the dissolved salt in the sea water so it is calculated as the amount of the salt in grams dissolved in the thousand grams of the sea water here it is usually expressed as a part of 
per thousand of ppt so here the average salinity of the ocean is 35 per thousand or about the 35 part of the salt in thousand parts of the water here so all the sea water contains the large amount of dissolved mineral water of which sodium chloride or dissolved mineral water of which the sodium chloride or the common salt alone constitutes with the 77.8 percent so see this picture of the water salinity you can understand better how it is worked and how the water is salty and fresh now we will see about the ocean temperature here when compared to land here the temperature in the ocean does not show how much variations but these little variations show the great impact so here these are the effects caused by the changes in the temperature in the pacific ocean and the ocean temperature is influenced by the latitudes winds ocean currents and unequal distribution of land and changes of seasons also so here normally the temperature in the oceans varies from the minus 2 degrees celsius to 29 degrees celsius here here the vertical distribution of the temperature as one goes deep inside the ocean here the temperature decreases and the fall in temperature is very steep for the first kilometer after that here there is a steady decline up to the depth of the five kilometers below that here the temperature is steady at about the two degrees celsius so this is all about the ocean temperature now we will see about the ocean currents here here the ocean current is the generally movement of the mass of water in a fairly defined direction over a great distance so here the ocean currents are sometimes called as the ocean rivers here the ocean currents may be classified based on the temperature as cold currents and warm currents here here the warm currents flow towards the poles whereas the cold currents flow towards the equator here the ocean currents are classified as stream and drift based on their speed get it here here the ocean water current which flows speedily is called the stream and the which was slowly is called the drift so here the ocean currents are caused by the following factors that is centrifugal force effect of winds precipitation solar energy and here the salinity density differences melting of ice is also the effect of ocean currents here so after this now we will see about the ocean as a resource here here most life on earth is under the water and here the human being still have not finished the identifying all the different forms of life in the oceans exactly so here the human beings have depended on oceans for their food and for their livelihood from the ancient times only mm, here the oceans provided the abundant food resources like fish and salt and we also use the sand gravel etc for our industry or housing so here the human beings extract the minerals like chlorine fluorine iodine from oceans so here the oceans waves are used for the generating power also here the ocean floor is mined for oils and here oceans also provided us with gems and pearls also for the centuries which we are using we have created our civilization on its show and trade across with each other traveling on them so here yet today the oceans have also fallen the victim of our exploitation many large fishes like the whales have been disappearing here the oceans have also becoming the dumping ground for the plastic and other forms of toxic waste here so see this picture of the petroleum drilling at bombay highway and observe the map of ocean currents so by this observation and explanation of the hydrosphere we have completed our third chapter thank you